Hey, Vlad here, devinsider.com. Welcome to another video. So I'm still in the middle of this lengthy tooling related playlist and today we're going to talk about the world of terminal multiplexers. A multiplexer is essentially a terminal that emulates multiple terminals inside of it. Think of it as an internet browser with a bunch of tabs. And these days they can also take this one tab and split it into several so-called panes or tiles. But we're going to get to that. Now, even though multiplexing is super useful and let's be honest, just super cool, it is actually not the most important feature of these so-called terminal multiplexers. It is something else entirely, namely the ability to detach from the terminal without shutting it down. There will be two videos about them. This is the first one in which we're just gonna play around with terminal multiplexers and I will explain them to you on a conceptual level. And the next one will be a pure tutorial in which we're gonna learn about the settings, the shortcuts, gotchas, workarounds, etc, etc. I think that's all I wanted to say before the intro. Yeah, let's get right to it. As in most of my videos, I'm on Windows 10 and I'm also running an Ubuntu 18.04 inside of a virtual machine. Now, usually I run only one of them, but today we're going to run two of them. And I'm using the Windows 10 virtual desktop feature with a bunch of shortcuts that allow me to switch between the virtual desktops. So I can go to Windows like this. It looks very similar because it uses the same wallpaper. I can go back to my virtual machine and this is the virtual machine that I use to prepare all of my videos, right? This is not the one that you usually see when I record. This is the one that you usually see when I record. Now it looks exactly the same, but the difference is that it doesn't have any multiplexers installed. This is the one that we're going to use in the next video where we're going to install all of these multiplexers. And this is the one, you know, that I use to prepare my videos. This is the one where, which already has my multiplexers. It already has all of my themes, all of my customizations. And this is the one where this, that we're going to use to play around with them. All right. Essentially, there are two very prominent multiplexers. One is called Screen and the other one is called Tmux. Now, there are more, but these are the two main ones. Now, you should probably know that Screen came out in 1987. And by the way, fun fact, this also means that Screen and I are of the same age. Now, there were times where a screen was not actively maintained, and so Tmux came along in 2007, which was 20 years later. I have to admit, though, that both of them these days are being very actively maintained. The latest release for both of them was just a couple of months ago. There's also a tool called Biobu, and I'm used to pronouncing it as Biobu, which is wrong, so sometimes I'm going to say it wrong. Essentially, this used to be just an abstraction layer on top of screen. Think of it as a set of plugins. So when you would install Biobu, it would actually behind the scenes install screen, install a bunch of plugins for it, configure it for you, and so on. After Tmux came out, Biobu was upgraded to support both backends, both the Tmux and the screen. And in fact, these days it actually uses Tmux by default. So when you install Biobu, it will not install screen, it will install Tmux instead. But as I already mentioned, switching the backend to screen is just a matter of a couple of seconds. But these days, most people seem to actually use Tmux instead of screen, even though I don't have any data to support this. Tmux seems to be a bit more user friendly. All right, so as I already mentioned, I already have Biobu installed over here, which runs Tmux behind the scenes. And just as a reminder, this is not going to be a tutorial. The tutorial is going to be the next video where we're going to go through all of the shortcuts and you know the, the gotchas and the workarounds and so on. Before I even show you Biobu, let me mention that all of these tools, Screen, Tmux, and Biobu, are massively, massively powerful tools, and so they can be a bit scary at first, especially because they're terminal-based tools. So similar to Vim, most people know how to get inside of Vim, but often they forget how to get outside of them, and they end up killing the whole process, or you know, googling around how to actually you know press Escape and then colon and then W and then Q. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to take the sphere away from you by covering the basics. So this is an Ubuntu 18.04, which is an operating system which happens to run inside of a virtual machine which is not really important for this discussion but it will actually become uh, a bit more important later in the video as most operating systems it has a thing called a windows manager and a windows manager manages windows so when i start an application it starts in a window so this is an application which is a file manager which manages files this is an application which is a browser called chrome takes a while to start i have to enter the password notice how when uh, these windows open my windows manager randomly decides size where to put them and I can also grab them resize them move them around and so on now Linux systems are very highly configurable for instance you could install a completely different file manager and also a completely different window manager and I'm mentioning this because there is this concept of tiling window managers and they will become a bit um, more important later in the video but essentially tiling, win tiling window managers they will not just spawn windows that you will be able to move around like this they will basically if you open one window it will always spawn in full screen and if you open the second one it will minimize the first one to the half of the screen and the other one to the other half of the other screen. Uh, I'm not sure why I can't do that. I actually tried this in the past, but essentially what a Thailand Windows Manager would do, it would put the other window 
like this right and if you open the third one it will you know partition your screen like this you know and so on and so on and so on it will become more important later in the video all right so one of these windows can be a terminal or technically a terminal emulator by default if i press ctrl alt in ubuntu it will start the so-called gnome terminal which is just a regular application and you can have multiple of them running side by side so it spawns in a regular window as any other application as well it is an application like any other so i can move it around and i can resize it and whatnot and the program that lives inside of the terminal or the terminal emulator is called the shell and by default on Ubuntu or and in you know in most Linux systems the default shell is called the bash shell I actually have a different one called ZSH or sometimes people pronounce it ZSH and it's over here and I'm running it as my default shell and um, I made sure that I disabled all the plugins because I don't want you to get confused which parts come from Biobu and which parts actually come from my shell now the terminal itself it has actually a bunch of settings that you know I the colors and you know the font size and how the cursor looks like and so on and obviously some of these settings affect the shell as well now the shell is a program that accepts commands and uh, gives you responses for example the ll command which will just list the files that i have uh sitting in my home folder let me uh, actually increase it like this the important thing to know is that the shell is a so-called child process of the terminal which means that if i close the terminal the shell will die with it so i close the terminal and it doesn't even as it doesn't even tell me that there is a, a process running inside of it because it knows that at least there will be a shell inside of it and also I don't want to confuse you but if I also kill the shell then the terminal will die with it this all only happens with the shell okay so if I type in exit it will close or the same uh, thing happens if I press ctrl D the terminal closes as well let me actually demonstrate this for you with another application so this file manager over here it's called Nautilus and I can type Nautilus over here and I can uh, give it a dot as an argument and what it will do it will launch the file manager inside of my uh, current folder which happens to be in my home folder right so it, it starts over here and notice that because I ran it from the shell uh, it became you know the shell became the parent process of, of this file manager right so this is why we also see some output before we didn't see it right so if I just click over here we don't see the output it's pipe pipe somewhere else okay now the important thing to understand is that even though this is a graphical application the same rules apply so if I close the terminal now it, it will say hey it's not just a shell that is running in there there is actually another process inside of that shell so it says there is still a process running in the terminal closing the terminal will kill it okay I close the terminal the whole file manager dies with it now some applications are so-called uh, terminal applications which means they live inside of the terminal so they sort of have a graphical interface like this one it's called htop and this is just a task manager you can install it by typing uh, sudo apt uh, install hyphen y htop the same rules apply to them as well right so if i close the terminal it will say hey there is an application running inside of it are you sure you want to close it yeah yeah i'm sure just close just close it and now it's that another example of a terminal application is vim which is a popular text manager so you can do vim uh blah and it will open a file and i will be able to modify the file and we'll be able to save the file and so on there are also other fun applications like sl this is for people who type ls to list the files and they type it so fast that they accidentally type sl okay let me press ctrl l now screen and tmux and by the way i will use the words tmux and biobu interchangeable in this video now both of them are terminal applications the cool thing to know about them is that when you type in biobu or when you type in screen or tmux multiple things are happening multiple processes get started and some of these processes are not children of the shell which means that if you close the terminal only part of these processes will die how can this be well both screen and tmux and by the way from now on i'm just going to say biobo and you're going to know you know that i actually mean tmux behind the scenes they're uh, so-called client server applications which means that if we type in biobo uh, multiple things will happen the first thing that will happen is the biobo server will start behind the scenes and it will create a so-called session it will call it zero but you can rename sessions anyway we're going to get to that okay and if you're not familiar with sessions essentially you can think of it, of it as if it starts uh, multiple servers okay so it starts the server but then another thing is also happening right so you type in one command uh, multiple things are happening the server gets started the session gets started inside of that server but also the client gets started which connects to that session and the client is the child of the shell which means that if you close the terminal only the client will die but the session will survive let me show this to you if i type in biovu ls which stands for list sessions it will say that no server is running 
right? We can pretty much ignore that part, right? And by the way, uh, as I already mentioned, it actually runs Tmux behind the scenes. So we actually see exactly the same output and you can also type in uh, list session and also list sessions. It, 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 you know, it swallows everything, right? But usually you would say Biobo LS. And also I have an alias for Biobo. I can just say B, right? So instead of typing out Biobo, I'm just gonna say B, B LS, for example, like this. One last thing to understand about Biobo is that they can be thought of themselves as shell. So you can configure your terminal uh, to run Biobu as, as a shell. So what will happen now is we're going to finally type in Biobu or, you know, I will just type in B and what will happen is it will start Biobu, right? So it, it will start, it will start the server. It will create a session. It will create a client. The client will attach automatically to that session. This is going to be a terminal application, which is by the way, heavily configured on my machine. And then the first thing that it will do is it will actually run the ZSH again for me, right? So it's essentially going to emulate a terminal for me. So let's actually type B. So I'm going to type in B. All of this happens behind the scenes. And now we have my ZSH again. So I can type exactly the same commands as before. Ignore all of these things for now. I'm going to explain them uh, later. Now, I just want to stress the fact again that if you're going to install Biobo by yourself, it's not going to look anything like this. And this is, by the way, the reason why I have the other VM so that I can go in there. I can uh, spawn the terminal and I can say sudo apt uh, install hyphen Y be able like this we're going to do more of this in the next video okay so it's just going to take a couple of seconds and and now it's installed and i have my you know I'm, I'm synchronizing my dot files by the way so you can watch my video about how to do that and so i have exactly the same aliases over here so i can just type in b and it will start biobu and we'll say welcome to the light and powerful text window manager blah 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 in fact if i maximize it this is how it's going to look like so it's going to have a bunch of things and if you compare this with uh, this if i maximize um and that one okay it looks a bit more minimal because this is you know this is how i like it so this is how it looks like by default and this is how it looks like for me okay in fact i believe that this is the last thing that we actually you know the only thing that that uh, we needed this virtual machine for so i'm actually going to close this and i'm going to even shut shut it down okay power off we don't really need it okay so let's go back to this vm and i'm going to minimize the terminal like this okay now again what's important to understand is that even though we're seeing a bunch of things over here inside of it we're running a regular shell so we can type all of these fancy commands like sl or you know we can go into htop and you know see these things you know and get out of it you know it's a regular shell that is running inside of this terminal now because this is a regular shell we can also go and type in bls right to you know to see to see the sessions okay so now it's going to say okay so there's one session it's called one and by the way i configured my biobo to show me this session over here right in fact i can rename it like this i'm going to show you the shortcuts in the, in the next video i'm going to call it uh my session okay and now if you do bls it will say it. so now this is called my session okay and inside of it it runs you know one window and it was created on thursday blah 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 and it also shows me the size of the terminal Technically, the size of the terminal is 50 by 20, um, but, you know, there's obviously some margin somewhere, okay? And it also says that we're attached to this session. Now, notice that the output says that there is only one window, and this is the multiplexing part, right? So the windows are basically tabs. So this is this is my, you know, my tab. I can also rename it to, you know, um, I'm going to say my window, and you can also spawn other windows, and you can even take one window and split it into several parts. And, you know, this is the multiplexing part. If you've seen this for the first time, it might look super, super cool, but honestly, these tools have been around for like 30 years. So bear with me. This is not what we're talking about, right? So let me destroy all of them for now like this. All right, so let's uh, talk about the important part. So if I run HTOP over here and I'm going to start another terminal like this, okay? So it's not a tile manager, so window manager, so it spawned it wherever it wanted, okay? So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna say BLS and it will say, well, there is actually another session. So let's go and close it. Let's go and close the terminal. It says, hey, there is still a uh, process running in the terminal. Closing the terminal will kill it. Well, it's talking about the Viobu. It's not talking about HTOP. Okay, let's close the terminal. Let's go over here, type in BLS, and the session still survived. So we can start the terminal again, and it spawned somewhere very close, okay? I can type in B, and by default, it will join into the same session. Now, by the way, this is the difference between Tmux and Biobu. Uh, Tmux, by default, will just create a new session. Uh, Biobu just uh, sees that if there is no session, it will create one. If there is a session, it will attach to it. And if there are multiple sessions, it will actually you know, prompt you to, to select the session. We can actually do it right now. Um, I can use a shortcut to create another session. And this one is called two. I can actually rename it to my uh, other session, for example, like this. Okay. And now I can close the terminal again like that. 
close the terminal just close the terminal but if i type in bls over here we're going to see that there are two sessions there's my session and there's my other session okay so which means if i run the terminal again i type in b bubble will notice oh so uh there are two sessions so you can press one and you're gonna uh, join into this my other session you can press two and you will join into my session you can press three and it will create an entirely new session or you can just press four and we'll run the regular shell which in my case is the zsh shell okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my other session so i'm going to press one and i'm going to actually kill this session by pressing ctrl d and again all the shortcuts will be explained in the next video and i configured my bobo in such a way that if i kill the session it should uh, jump into the other one if it already exists this is actually very consistent consistent with this with these uh splits and uh, you know the window so if i kill one split it will the focus will jump to another one if i kill the window the, the focus will jump to another one so if i kill a session it should also jump into the other one all right so now we have one terminal inside of it we're running the zsh inside of it we're running biobu inside of biobu we're running zsh again and inside of it we're running htop now if i type in bls over here we're going to see that there is only one session but what happens if i type in b or you know biobu in this other terminal let's see well the same thing happens as I explained to you. Biobu sees that there is one session, so it creates a client that attaches to the session. So essentially, we get pair programming for free. So okay, I can whatever I press on one of them also happens on the other one. I, for example, if I rename this session to pair programming like this, if you use a tool like Vim, so I'm gonna go into here. Oh, I actually already had it. Um, so um, I have. Um, I actually wanted to type this out, but I forgot that I, that I already had it. So let's go and change this to uh, Hello World. As you can see, it happens in the other screen as well. Okay, so I can actually run this application like that and everything is happening uh, live. So essentially you get pair programming for free. Now there is actually more. Are you ready for some magic? Let me put this over here. Look what's gonna happen if, if I'm gonna resize one of the terminals. Magic. Right. So basically it says that there is a smaller client that is connected to the session. And so it will adapt this. I believe that this is a configuration that it can be actually turned off. Okay. Now you might think like, what kind of pair programming is this if this is on the same computer? Well, nobody says that you have to be on the same computer. Assuming that you can SSH into this box. And by the way, this is not an SSH tutorial, so I'm not going to explain how to do this, but I will show it to you. Right. Then you can also join the, the, the same session. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, minimize these, let's say, let's do, I don't know, uh, 40 by 10, maybe. Okay. 40, uh, 40 by 10. Let's do another one over here. And I'm going to do, uh, 40, 40 by 10. Okay. So they're just, uh, below each other. So I'm going to press right control F and this will minimize my virtual machine, right? So behind, so this is windows now, right? This is windows. And inside of it, we're running my virtual machine. So I can run a uh, putty, uh, which is an SSH client. And again, this is not an SSH tutorial. Okay. So it knows how to connect to my machine. So if I type in Vlad and I type in my password, and then I'm inside of my machine. I can do BLS. I can see, oh, there's a session. So I can type in B and bam, I'm inside of the same thing. So I can actually put it over here, right? And I can do exactly the same things, the same things. Okay. I can go in over here, you know, I can change the, change the thing. So if you're, if you're a Vim user or, you know, Emacs user, some, you know, some uh, terminal editor uh, user, you know, you, you get, yeah, you get pair programming essentially for free. Now, the interesting thing is that, you know, if we close these, right? Yes, close terminal. Yes, close terminal. And by the way, as soon as I close ter close the terminal, this client will realize that it's now is the only one and therefore the biggest one and therefore it will change the size. Look, I'm closing the terminal. Now I'm inside of the Biobu runs, you know, the, the full screen over here, right? But it also means that even though like no client is connected to the session, the session is still alive. So if I lose the connection, right? If I just close putty, okay? I can still, you know, I, it, the session is still alive. Okay. So if I go over here, you know, I type in BLS, the session is still there. So I can, you know, go and connect again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I type in B and bam, I'm inside of my session. Super, super cool. A very important thing to understand uh, is also that uh, the only thing that I needed on my Windows machine was an SSH client, right? I didn't need Biobu to have Biobu installed over there. So typically Biobu is installed on the server. So I want to be crystal clear um, about um, about these sort of like two user groups for these tools. One is the typical, you know, sysadmins, right? They will manage, I don't know, hundreds of servers. And on each of those servers, they will have Biobu installed or, you know, Tmux with all of their settings, with all of their dot .files and all, the, all of their cool things. The other group is, you know, mere, you know, mortal devices 
developers like me who will uh, rather have Yobu installed on their client and simply use it as a terminal multiplexer, right? So they will just, you know, create tabs and uh, I, I wanted to to create tabs, but you know what what Biobu does is it, it adds the shortcuts that are uh, positioned in your F row, right? So in your F keys, and you know Putty doesn't doesn't like that. Okay, so what I wanted to go here, you know, I wanted to to go and you know connect to the same session again, and you know to uh, create Windows again and create the splits. Okay, let me actually close that. Okay, so uh, I just want to make sure that you understand that, you know, if you fall in love with Biobu and then you SSH into some, some server, uh, you know, you have to have, you know, root access, you know, to have, you know, to, to be able to install Biobu or, you know, you have to ask a sysadmin to install Biobu for you, you know, then you have to make sure that, you know, your, your dot files are there so that your Biobu and your short keys and all of that, uh, you know, works there as well. Now comes sort of the scary part. Now, how do you actually kill the session? And in order to kill a session, you just press Control D. You know, this is like one of those things. That, you know, like people get into Vim, but they don't know how to how to get uh, how to get out of it. Uh, uh, come on, just attach to that. Okay. So uh, again, if I just close the terminal, the session doesn't die. But if I pr actually press Control D, it will actually die. Notice that it dies like on all of them. Okay. And uh, remember, I told you that you know usually terminals are configured in such a way that if the only process that you're running inside of it is a shell, and you kill the shell then you know the terminal will close as well what what you can do is you can um and go over here you can go to preferences and you can uh go to uh where is it uh command right and you can say run a custom command instead of my shell and you can run run biobu okay so if i'm going to close this i'm going to close the terminal i'm going to start the terminal again the first thing that it will do it will just start biobu right and you can also configure it to do and by the way so so now if i tap in exit or or if i press Control d right so i'm just exiting the shell right the zsh but it's the only process that is running so uh it will actually close the terminal as well right the the, the session is still running though right okay so i can do this bam okay uh let me actually uh, go and revert this because i want this to be you know less confusing so i don't want that okay so let me close that starting this is the regular shell the session is still there. What you can also do is you can type in Biobu enable. And what it will do is it says the Biobu window manager will be latched automatically at each next login to disable this behavior later, just run Biobu disable. This means that if I'm in putty here, right? So I'm gonna go and connect, right? The same thing essentially will happen um, as as if as if it was the uh, come on, attach. What's what's wrong with you? Anyway, um, so if I type in my password, if I press and enter, the same effect is going to happen as if it was a terminal which can run by Yobo by default, Biobo by default. Okay, so I type in enter. So see, I wasn't in ZSH and I didn't type in B. I was dropped in into, into the session right away. And this also means that if I just type in exit over here, the same thing is going to happen. You know, the whole putty is going to, is going to shut down. Let's actually go and disable this real quick. Disable like this. Okay, so... Um, so far, we didn't have actually much control over, over the sessions. We were just always, you know, closing. What's happening? We were always just, you know, closing the terminal. I actually hate it when, when, it, when it displays this thing. Um, you, can, you can put a file into your home directory. So if I'm going to go into my um, .files, stove, and if I do stove th shell, uh, what it will do is it will create this hash login file, which disappears sometimes. I, I hate it that it disappears. If you have this hash login, then it will not display this information. Like usually you want to have this information displayed if you're connecting to, to some server, uh, but I'm connecting to my local machine, so I actually don't want this. So uh, let me show close this again and connect again uh, like this, like over there. Let me actually press control L over here like this. Whoops. Oops. Control L. Okay, so let me connect. Let me do this. Okay, so so far, uh, what we have been doing is we have been, you know, going and just closing the terminals. Okay, or you know, we have been, you know, killing the session. If I press Control D, you know, the session will, uh, you know, will, will die in both of them. Okay, if I press Control D, the session died over here. It died over here as well. Uh, let's, let's actually start one. By the way, notice if I started over here, uh, for some reason these colors they will transport over there as well. See this this color is red now. So instead of just closing, you can uh, actually press another shortcut. And again, we're going to do all the shortcuts in the next video. But essentially, instead of Control A D, you can press Control A and then D, and it will detach. Right. So detaching basically means it's the same as closing, but this closing is basically the same as you know like losing the connection. Uh, this way, in you know, in this way, you just have more control. So instead of just closing the terminal, I can just say just please detach from the session. Just don't don't destroy it. 
By the way, this is sort of like a fun fact that um, the way the shortcuts are structured in screen is that you always press Control A and after that you enter something else, right? So for example, in this case, Control A and then D. Now Tmux came out later and it used the same structure, but instead of Control A by default, it was using Control B. And actually most people hate this and they change it to Control A. Uh, Biobo actually prompts you to, uh, to choose what you want to do, which we're going to see in the next video. There's also a way to detach everyone but yourself. So if I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go over here and, you know, we can also uh, start yet another one uh, over here. Okay, so we're running a bunch of them. Okay, and I can go into this one and I can say, okay, this one uh, is, you know, this is the one that should survive. Now, by, by default in Biobo, as I said, it, it, it puts the, uh, you know, the keys on the terminal row. So this one is actually uh, Alt F6, which, I'm gonna, which is what I'm going to explain to you in the next video. Uh, so if I press it by default, it will collide with one of the shortcuts in Ubuntu. So make sure that you have this one disabled. Okay, I'm going to press Alt F6. It disconnected all the others. Okay, in fact, let me close Putty. Oh, we actually don't need it. I think we don't need it anymore. Let's close this one. Let's close this one. And let me uh, go into full screen like this again. And by the way, if we type in BLS, we're going to see this uh, that, that the, the server is dead. But if I do B, and then if I detach from the session, I do BLS, the session is still there. What you can do is you can kill the entire server, right? So it will kill uh, all the sessions like this. And I type in BLS, and now it's not as dead. Okay, so let's go into Biobo again. So everything that I've shown you so far basically used only one session. But remember that you can actually use uh, multiple sessions. And there's pretty much only one command that affects all of them. And this is the one that I just showed you. There is also a shortcut to do that. I'm going to show this to you in the next video. So just press the shortcut and ask me do you want to kill you know kill the server yes please kill the entire server okay so to recap um, essentially unless you know what you're doing whatever you do your session will survive as long as the Biobo server is running or you know and, and technically you know like as, as long as you're usually it's like this as long as your server is running you know your you know your machine is running um, you know it's gonna survive however if you if you shut it down obviously it's gonna die uh, and I'm sure that there are solutions for this as well you know even my entire VM you know I can I can uh, press over here and it, and it will ask me do you want to save the machine state right so if, if it can do that i'm sure that you know there are some some settings out there that that it can actually also you know persist your your session as well okay so we're pretty much done with the session so um now what we're going to do is we're going to play around with the actual multiplexer part so let me actually go into a full screen and i'm going to in fact let me create another terminal okay so i'm going to go into a full screen let me type bls there is nothing running so i'm going to do b okay so uh, as already mentioned so you basically have sessions inside of the sessions you have windows inside of the windows you have the tile and I'm gonna we're gonna do all the shortcuts in the next video but essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another uh, session okay so you see the session over here okay this is a session two inside of the session I'm going to create another window which is over here one and two and I'm gonna create yet another session which is gonna be the sessions three inside of it I'm gonna create another window yet another window inside of this window I'm gonna have a split and inside of that split I'm gonna have another vertical split Okay, so you can obviously jump around between the sessions. So uh, I'm gonna jump over here, session, 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 session. You can jump between the windows like this, and you can also jump between the splits like this. What you can also do is you can resize the splits like that. Okay, like that. And you also have a graphical representation of um, of uh, of the whole sessions, right? So you can press a key combination and it will show you that, okay, you see uh, we're currently in the split. So I'm going to press enter. I actually want to go into another window, which is bigger. So it shows you, okay, so there are three sessions running. They're called one, two, and three. The first one has only one window. And at the bottom, you actually have kind of a preview, okay? Uh, over here, you have two windows. Over here, you have three, three windows, okay? And then you can, you can go uh, actually in depth over here. You can see, oh, so this one, it actually runs, uh, you know, only one pane this one also runs only one pane and this star by the way says that this is the one that we're attached to so we're attached to this uh this session uh we're inside of this window over here okay so uh but the third one it actually has you know multiple panes so you can go in there and you can decide okay i want to join uh you know into this pane like this by the way i know that it's super painful that i'm not telling you actually how to do this thing just bear with me we're going to do the whole thing in the next video now you can rename the sessions as i already showed you this is my session you can also rename the windows so this is going to be the third window and this is going to be the second window and this is going to be the first 
window and you can also change their position so for example let's say that i want the first window uh to be over here so i can just press another combination and it will move it over there and i can keep moving it further or i can move it back and so on and if i actually go back to um the third window over here i can actually do the same thing with the split so for example if i'm running htop and one of them i can actually move this split so i can move it up i press the run one so i can move it up like this and i can you know moving uh keep, keep moving it like this uh, i can also toggle the entire layout like that right so it can look like this it can look like that so for example I can do it like this and uh, now I can increase the the size of that one and then I can decide oh I actually don't want to have this split on this side so I'm gonna put it over here right so you have all of these cool possibilities another cool thing is that you can rip out a split into its own window so right now we have three windows and my focus is currently in this one which runs htop so I can press a combination and it will create another window and put that split inside of it right so I, this is what just happened i pressed it now it's it, now it's the whole thing and i can also merge it back in by pressing another combination like this right so now it's you know it, it, it put it in, into this split and not, not, not the other one what you can also do is you can uh, zoom in right so i'm, I'm into htop and i'm pressing pressing combination notice that this z over here it says that it just zoomed in okay and i can zoom back out uh, also notice that the star denotes the tab that i'm currently in uh, also my theme uh specified in such a way that it's also it's also going to be bold and the one that has a hyphen in the end is is the previous one so it no, so it shows me okay before you were here now you're here so i'm going to switch to the first one for example it's going to say okay now we're here but before we were there and this pound symbol it shows that something changed in there, right? So remember, we're running htop in there and something is changing in there all the time, right? So this just shows you, okay, somewhere over there, something changed. Now, this whole conversation about moving things around brings me actually to the mouse. This can be a very, very scary, scary thing. So uh, very often you're gonna be, uh, for example, in that split and you're gonna be tailing uh, var log uh, syslog for example right and you're gonna be like oh i want to see what's what's up there so you start you, t you grab your mouse you're starting scrolling up and then this happens this is a very very scary thing if you're a programmer you might know that uh you know the the way these things are built is essentially that uh, every time something changes your um you know, Biobu uh, sends a, a signal to the terminal to essentially uh, scroll down the height of the entire screen, right? So basically the previous frame is is up there, right? So this is the entire previous frame. Now, don't panic, right? So uh, you can you can scroll down over here. Uh, so you can press another combination and enter the so-called uh, history mode. You see these numbers over here. You see, okay, there are 74 lines. Anyway, you can use the arrow keys to go up and down. Uh, you can also go, you know, page up and page down. And also this is uh, this is how you how you copy right so what you can do is you can go somewhere over here you can say i want to copy from here they're actually you know copying in tmux is actually a bit painful i'm going to show you this uh, a bit more in in in, in the next video uh so you can do it you can do it with a keyboard like this so you can find okay this is the place that i want right so okay, again okay let, let, let's do this okay so usually usually what I, what i would do if i press q I'm, I'm in the regular mode so let's say i want to copy something usually what i will do is i will i will zoom into this pane okay and then i will use my mouse to copy as i usually would right so i can type uh, do this and do Control shift c Control shift v or i can or i can right click you know this menu comes from gnome i just copy it i paste it it works like a charm however you cannot scroll here right so i can i cannot go down and this is where you uh where you would enter this mode and you know you will position uh your let me go up a little bit okay so you will position your cursor to the point where you want to start copying then you're going to press space you know we're going to do the shortcuts in the next video but i'm going to tell you a couple of them are here so let's say they want to start from here so i'm going to press space and i'm actually going to mark with my arrow keys you know my left hand doesn't do anything uh until i want to copy let's say until label equals okay notice that you know the the magenta color is the one that is important and not my cursor because usually it's the block cursor okay now i'm going to press enter and it's still in the history mode by the way this is because i configured in such a way usually when you press enter it will actually jump out of this history mode or scroll mode okay so uh, now we can you know create another window uh, i don't know i can go into um um you know let's actually let's actually run sublime right i can go over there and i can i can paste uh what I, what i just copied by the way i had to configure a few extra things for this to work because uh you know tmux and Biobo they use their own buffers so uh usually you cannot paste things you know outside of them right but you know there's a thing that you can configure i'm going to show it to you in the next video okay uh let me actually close this close that close that as well um another cool thing is that you know remember biobo is just a you know a layer on top of tmux so it gives you a lot of really cool things uh one of these cool things is um this copying okay so um 
let's say uh, I'm gonna zoom back out okay so I, again my focus is over here I can just press one simple combination and what it will do is it will just print this entire thing into a file um, that is positioned in um, I actually don't remember where it's positioned because I have um, I have an alias that will just open this file uh, with Sublime. So it's position, so it's it's located over there, right? So if I go over here, if I copy that, if I uh, cd into that directory, I'm gonna see that there's a file called print screen. Okay, so and I have an alias that will just open this this file with Sublime. So if I do just Subble, uh, I'm sorry, Subble just just start this this thing. Uh, my alias is is buffer. Okay, so it's gonna start Sublime and just copy this entire history uh, in there. Okay, so you know, Beobo gives you a very very simple thing, a simple thing to do this, a simple way to do this. Okay, let me close that, close that. Let me actually zoom back out. Um, we're not actually zoomed uh, anymore. Uh, we were zoomed somewhere else over here. But I should also mention that there's also a mouse mode, so I can press a combination and it will say mouse on. And now I can actually grab my mouse and I can you know, resize the windows. I can click around, I can say go into this window, go into that window, go into that window, go into this split, go into that split. Uh, I can actually start like, look, if I if I now, because, you know, because my mouse mode is enabled, I click over here, I start scrolling, but it will go automatically into this mode. And in fact, if you start marking things, it will not go you know, into this pane, okay? It will actually mark things properly, but and somehow if I let go then you know it doesn't you know it sort of lets go I need to you know play around with it a bit more you know configure properly so that the mouse can also copy uh, I actually don't recommend you to use the mouse because if you start using the mouse you're never gonna uh, learn the shortcuts and you're never gonna gain you know the full power the full the full speed that you get from from using these shortcuts let me see, let me actually disable the uh, mouse again all right so the last thing that I'm going to show you is how to send multiple com uh, you know how to send the same command to multiple panes okay so let's go over here and I'm gonna do that okay so uh, I can do uh, Shift F9 in, in Biobo, and I can send a command to command to all the panes. For example, I can say clear, right? So it will clear all of them. I can also do this the same thing with uh, you know with the with the panes. It's a different uh, shortcut. I'm sorry, now with the panes with the window, right? So I can do LL, and it will do it in this pane and also in every other window, right? So in every other window that I'm going to, it did LL. Okay, uh, this is not what I do usually though. Usually I press another combination and it just gives me a cursor essentially in every in every one of them, right? So I can do Control L, I can do LL. You know, it basically it's very useful if you connect to multiple servers at once and you know just start typing. You know, usually you would have like I don't know um, five shards of the same database and you know they they configured exactly the same, so you can go in there, press this one combination. You know, if you want to install you know install a tool in there, um, install. Uh, HTOP. Now I already have uh, HTOP, so you know it's just basically everything. Everything is is mimicked. Uh, okay, this was actually a bad example because you know you can't do this on the same machine. You know to 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 install something on the same machine uh, because because of the locks. But if if these were you know different servers, uh, this would obviously work. Obviously work. All right. Now these tools are extremely extremely powerful, and I just showed you basically you know just the basics. You know there are other cool things that you can do with them. For example, you know you can you can save your entire layouts and you know decide which one you want to load. You can you, know, you can generate layouts. And and, you know, there, 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 there's a ton of things that you can do with them. By the way, a couple of videos ago, I showed you Quake. So this is how I usually run Biobo. Okay, so right now I actually um, disable Quake. Uh, but if I detach from the session, if I close this terminal, uh, and if I'm going to go into um, Quake, uh, Quake terminal, okay? And it started behind the scenes. So if I press F12, it says, oh, there are multiple sessions. Well, connect to, connect to one of them. Um, uh, this one, for example. Okay, so if I go to preferences, uh, my um, uh, my shell over here is is Biobo. Okay, so essentially, you know, I I, I start my my machine. Uh, Wake runs uh, by default. It starts, you know, this the session. Uh, it runs over there, so, right? So if I kill uh, if I kill the entire um, uh, if I kill the entire server like this, so Wake is essentially dead. So if I do um, BLS over here, the session is the session is still there, right? Because Wake is always uh, always alive, right? So I'm doing this Control D. Uh, BLS, it's still alive. This is also the reason why I didn't run Wake this for this entire video to to not confuse you. Okay, so my session is always alive. I always have uh, you know uh, Biobo enable, uh, Biobo enable in case you know in case I connect to this machine, right? So uh, essentially, yeah. So my my Wake always runs and you know in full screen and it always runs inside of Quake. One last thing, remember that I mentioned these uh, tiling uh, window managers like i3. There was a reason why I mentioned them. The reason is that um, some people they they don't really um, 
they don't really need uh, the value that these um, these multiplexers provide, and because the real value you, you've seen it, the real power comes from this detaching, uh, not actually from the from the splitting. Uh, so their argument is usually okay. You know why why would I use something like like Biobo or Tmux if I can just install i3 and then I can um, not only you know split the windows for the and you know, have the terminals inside of them, I can actually you know have an image over here or I can run a video over here. And uh, the answer is well, if you don't need those features, then you know don't use. So basically, they they underestimate their power. So if you're a beginner, why don't you just, you know, why don't you just use both, you know, use the tile and window manager and, you know, inside of it, you can still run, run Tmux. Okay. So don't underestimate the, um, you know, the, the power of these tools because, you know, this multiplexing uh, is actually not the most fancy feature. All right. I hope you enjoyed this a bit lengthy video. Most of my videos are like this. And uh, as already mentioned in the next video, we're going to install Biobu, but if, you know, we're going to go through all the configuration, all of the shortcuts, all of these cool things, you know, for now, just, you know, thank you for bearing with me as always. It's been Vlad, devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video. If you did subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you and if you learned something today consider supporting me on patreon but most importantly take care